Hi, this is Neil with Rock Our World. That title of this channel is, is borrowed from uh, Daniel 2, where the rock comes out of the sky. That's Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and ends the final configuration of, of the end time government, a new world order made up of 10 kings or governments or leaders that will attempt to uh, govern the world by one with one body led by the Antichrist and the false prophet who are pigeonholed to be by the prophets to be Obama and the Pope anyway we get to see these things lots of things to pray about I'm gonna title this the Laodicean Church of Revelation I just did a couple about Revelation one uh, the White Horse, and the Seven Thunders, which was very, very bad news. So I'm going to kind of carry on with that bad news. And I'm going to start by reading from Revelation 3 and about the Sardis Church. And I'll tie all these things together. I believe that the, the three last churches in the book of Revelation are, in fact, the three armies in Rick Joyner's vision. And they will be the three divisions where the bride is the 144,000. That's the Church of Philadelphia, where the bridesmaids are these few people in the, in the Church of Sardis who rescue themselves by their efforts, by waking up. And remember, the bridesmaids were all prayer uh, sli asleep so they were prayerless they had done good things in their lives but they were had fallen asleep and then the third group the laity in church is the vast vast majority of the church of today so I'm going to read this I know all things you do and that you have a reputation for being alive but you are dead now wake up Strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is at the point of death. Your deeds are far from right in the sight of God. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. Hold to it firmly and turn to me again. Unless you do, I will come upon you suddenly, as unexpected as a thief. Now that is the key phrase that tells us that's the end times. In the Great Tribulation, the Lord comes right at the beginning as a thief in the night, unexpectedly, to find his bride and his bridesmaids. And then when he comes in great power and great glory as the Lion of God to subdue the nations that are surrounding Israel, we'll find, find that in the book of Zechariah 14. When he does that, that's the end of the tribulation, and it will be unmistakable to everyone. Everyone will see him, everybody on earth. And uh, so we have two events there. He comes at the beginning of the tribulation as a thief to find his bride and bridesmaids. He comes at the end, and actually he finds his guests, the third group. So I've talked a lot about these three groups. Now, as, you, as I just read you, that wasn't a good description. God is telling the Sardis church that they're all but dead. And what is going to happen is a few will wake up. Those will be the bridesmaids. Some are foolish, some are wise. Some have prepared better than others, but they will all be refined in the, in the fire of the Great Tribulation. Whereas the Philadelphia church is the bride of Christ. And then the Laodicean church is what all of us are right now. All of us are the Laodicean church. And this is the bad news I talked to you about in the seven thunders of Revelation, where Ezekiel is instructed to cut all his hair off and virtually everything, every, all the hair was destroyed eventually. Some uh, 
uh, one third immediately, one third was given a bit of time, and then the last third was given more time, the most time. But that pinch that was taken out, if you read the scriptures carefully, you'll find the pinch was divided into two. And uh, one was thrown in the fire, and it set everything on fire. And that's the, the great revival that's going to happen in the in the midst of the Great Tribulation. And then that other bit is who the bride is. And the bride will be the ones that oversee this great harvest that's coming along. So the focus of, I'm going to call this the, the Lady Seeing Church of the Book of Revelation. Try and focus on how all of us are this Lady Seen Church. Now I've pointed you towards Rick Joyner's vision many, many times. And it wasn't his vision, it was one that God gave all of us through him. I don't think Rick understood a lot of his vision. But uh, we're all challenged to wake up because we're all part of the Lady Seen Church. But in that vision, God gave him, uh, he showed him three armies. The first army was 144,000 people, 12 divisions of 12,000 each. We read that in Revelation 7, 1 to 8. These are the ones who do exactly what they're told. They have come through the troubles and trials and tribulation of their life. They come to trust the Lord 100%, so they never question. So they're not doing this out of, uh, they're not being forced to be obedient. They have chosen to be obedient. And obedience covers everything, including the keeping of the Torah of our Savior, which he kept perfectly as an example for us to keep perfectly. And of course, as humans, it's a lifetime to become perfect. That's why it says that. We are to become perfect perfect as our Savior is perfect. So anyway, Rick saw this first army, that's the bride. The second army was less than perfect, had flaws, uh, didn't have full armor, didn't have full weapon array. Uh, there was hidden agendas and some animosity, some jockeying for position, things like that. But he said, still, all in all, it was the best army he'd ever seen other than this first army. It was still a good army. These are the bridesmaids. And this, I'm going to say, is the Church of Sardis, the few that choose to follow this advice I just read from the from Revelation 3 to the Church of Sardis. The few that will wake up are the bridesmaids. Some need more refining than others. That's why there's five wise and five foolish. And the more foolish we are, the more likely we're going to end up in that place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. And as Eddie Chumney taught in his book, Who is the Bride? That's where I first was able to put these pieces together. That's the place of the outer court in God's throne room in heaven. In other words, our rewards for eternity are very, very small or nil other than the gift of salvation. And uh, God does not want us to have just salvation. He wants us to earn a great reward, and he has a job for everybody to do. So if you're just going to church, following along with the crowd, you are not doing your job. If you're pressing in and you are receiving information from the Lord of things to do day by day, then you are uh, coming into your destiny, into the role and the job that the Lord would have you do. So what I want to do now, I guess I've kind of covered, uh, let's get to the, the Church of Laodicea, and I covered this quite a bit, explaining Ezekiel's vision. Uh, from chapters 1 to 11, that all of us are Laodiceans right now. And in the original Aramaic, in the Ain't, that I've pointed you towards, the Aramaic English New Testament, 
by Andrew Roth, and you start by reading the 18 New Testament misconceptions. In there you'll find that uh, the Laodiceans were vomited out of the Lord's mouth. All other translations say things like spit or spewed, but it's vomited was the original word that John used when he got the message from our Savior, our Commander. Very graphic that there's nothing about this Laodicean church that God wants or likes. So that's all of us. And uh, going back to this vision that Rick received from the Lord, if you read the whole thing, you get the revelation that when the tribulation begins, and he called it the first great battle, that's when members of this Laodicean church awakened, some moved into the first army to be the bride, and some were moved into the second bride, uh, army to be the bridesmaids. So in other words, right now, Philadelphia church does not exist, and the few that the Lord is admonishing to awaken in the Sardis church have not awakened yet. <clears throat> now, what is the first great battle? So what I'm going to do now is take you to back to the, the seven people that I feel the Lord has led me to, to listen to, to um, digest their messages, try and sift out the, the human part of the messages. And of course, I have the same challenge. The, the part of me, the human filter that we have inherited by going to the religious system, the churches and synagogues and so on. The religious systems that were created by Satan in the Jewish world. It is called the Sanhedrin right now. It's the same people that killed Yeshua, the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they work with the dark, uh, mystic cabal Kabbalism, is that what you would call it? And then in the Christian side, I've pointed you towards back to Constantine. This is the beginnings of the modern church. We, we called it the Catholic Church at the time, and their system has evolved. Uh, their so-called leadership is the Vatican and the Jesuit system. Those are all very dark. Now, that doesn't mean Catholics are evil. There's just as many good Catholic churches and good priests and so on as any other denomination in today's modern world, but that leadership in the Vatican is evil. And the, so these two systems, one the Christian and the Jewish, their, their core is dark and evil. And we want to distance ourselves from those things, from darkness and evil. Now, I was talking about Rick Joyner's vision, these three groups, and, the, and this, this first great battle. What is it? Okay, let's get to these, these seven prophetic people that I pointed you towards. That quest started back a year and a half ago when the Lord sent seven eagles to our farm. And I don't necessarily think uh, that's the full meaning of what the Lord wanted. He said, it's time to gather the prophets. So this is part of it, I think. These seven people I put, I'm going <laughs> to uh, put to the head of the pack right now, Jeff Byerly. And I'd like you to, I'd encourage you to watch the last five of his um, videos that he put on his new channel. He was led by the Lord to start a YouTube channel and he's been asked to go back and read put together a compilation of all the messages the Lord's given him over let's say about three years I think they started in uh, around 2016 so go back and start with uh, the episode called get your affairs in order about a month ago and then the four since part 
one, two, three, and four of the kickoff event. So that's where I'm going. This, I believe, is going to be the first great battle that Rick referred to, or the vision referred to, in the Final Quest tr Trilogy. The first great battle is what brings on board these three churches. Or the one is already on board, the Laodicean church. We're, we're all dead in the water. But this, this event where New York City is blown up by an atomic weapon right out of the the new World Trade Center it was built on the spot of the Twin Towers that went down 19 years ago 18 years ago anyway at the event of those Twin Towers going down it was a prophetic it's going to happen again, the same spot. It's one building this time. And it points right towards the end of Revelation where the Lord talks about Babylon, or about the middle of Revelation. Uh, that great city is fallen. That's specifically talking about New York City. And this event, by all accounts, is going to happen very soon. And that will be the first great battle. That's the event that awakens both the Philadelphia church and the, and the Sardis church. That is the few in Sardis that will choose to wake up. They will be the bridesmaids. Those who enter the Philadelphia church will be the bride. So, now... Uh, I'll just carry along with these seven prophetic people. I really encourage you to listen to the messages that the Lord leads you to. Just go on their YouTubes or whatever. Find You're probably better at finding things than I am, but I can muddle along. Uh, I find Julie's messages hard to find, but... Uh, what I've been doing is I go to her blog called I Am Calling You Now and go to Julie Wedby, Behold I Come, and you'll find her most recent message. And she always writes it out, a transcript. And I found the last one extremely encouraging. Now, let's see what the title is. It's a, a message that was received on September 1 to 1st to 8th, 2019. And there is a title that I'm not finding at the moment. Anyway, go ahead and find that message. It's very, very encouraging. So, listen to Jeff's messages, Julie's messages. To uh, I'll, I'll mention the Lord is my shepherd next. Lisa reports a number of uh, messages from different people, but one I like is Miss Sophie, one I feel is very pointed and to the accurate. And also God's Healer 7, Sister Barbara and Brother Dan receive constant messages. Uh, take them seriously, I feel. I recommend that you take all of these very seriously. And then uh, the next would be, say, Tim Foster, 405. I have a, actually, I, I got one to talk to you about, one of his messages here, very recent, or the last one. And then Mike, 444. And these, these, uh, these people will rec will read messages from others. So they're kind of a collector of messages. And again, you got to take everything to the Lord in prayer. Don't just take it. Hook, line, and sinker. Take it through a filter. Do your very best with prayer and fasting. But one of the things that's happened in, let's say, the last couple of months is the Lord has stopped using the terminology that these things are going to be soon. And he started using the terminology that it's immediate. It's not soon anymore. It's immediate. 
Oh, and another one is lowest vocal sharp. She put her in a little bit different category, but she uh, she's very insistent that the economic collapse that's coming is going to happen this year, 2019. That's what the Lord has been showing her. We don't have much time left in 2019. And again, the prophetic people are saying that what will cause the economic collapse will be the destruction of New York City. And this trade center, of course, is the is the core of the world's economy, which is built on debt and greed, everything that's evil, the world's economy is built on. And that's why in the book of Revelation, the, when they see the smoke of this great city rising up, all the nations will mourn because they were made rich uh, by fornicating with this system. And, of course, these are all graphic metaphors the Lord's using. Okay, I think I covered all the prophets. Now I'm going to go back to Tim Foster. I had a pretty recent one. Uh, and I, rec I encourage you to watch it. Are there not 12 hours in a day? And he, he has some ideas there that I think, I think are possible. But I'm going to particularly point you towards a vision not more than a vision, a young man called Nathan, a young Jewish boy, secular, didn't know anything about teachings of Christianity or Judaism or anything. He just didn't know anything. And at 14, he died, and he had what we term a near-death experience. He was taken into the heavens, met uh, Yeshua, and... The Messiah explained to him a whole bunch of things that are going to happen in the scenario of the Great Tribulation. And they're, uh, they're listed there on Tim's, on this particular uh, episode. That's why I'm pointing you towards it. <clears throat> and uh, it took me a bit of doing, but I, I stopped the video and then... Uh, all 17 points that are in that that uh, revelation that that the Lord gave to this young Nathan. So anyway, there's probably lots of ways you can find that a report on that event or incident or revelation, and it's well worth going through those 17 points. And I myself believe that. Uh, the, all 17 are events that happen within the scope of the tribulation, which I have taught last 50 years. But the most traumatic part of it is the first seven years. And uh, again, part of the job I feel God's given me is to gather the prophets. So this is one of the, the people I would point you towards. Is read Nathan's account, try and digest it, try and put all the accounts of everybody together, and I guess at the end of the story, the, the main thing I want to get across today is that we are out of time. That's what the prophets are saying, that uh, we are going to see New York turn into a pile of rubble. It's a orchestrated event from within the states itself by what we call the deep state or the shadow government or the elite. People that have all the wealth in the world gathered through this evil economic system that's centered in that one building and a, a recent dream. I just uh, watched it the other day. A young man had this dream, very vivid dream, and uh, the nuclear weapon that was used was planted right inside that building. Just like those, those twin towers when they went down, a prophetic event, what's going to occur again. Uh, most people believe they went down through terrorists that uh, hit them with 
airplanes. If you watch the whole thing, and if you're an engineer, you can see that those planes would never cause those buildings to collapse. Those were those were uh, explosive charges that were planted inside those buildings that imploded them. And if you go on YouTube and watch the implosion of buildings that they're they're tearing down to build something new in its place, it's identical. So again, these were orchestrated events from within. They were uh, planned by the elite to, to further their agenda. And the agenda of this one is to bring down the world economy and replace it with the end time beast power, along with uh, Mark of the Beast and all the things that go along with it that we are to avoid at all cost. Anyway, then the story, it's important to equip ourselves with knowledge and to stop uh, accepting religion the way it's served to us. That if we just go to church on Sunday or Saturday and go and keep Christmas and Easter and Halloween and Purim and Hanukkah, None of those things God has instructed us to do as his appointed times. And we give honor to the, the system, the two systems that I talked about, the Christian system and the Jewish system. We give honor to them because they created those systems. Whereas if we read the word of God and do some research, we'll find that God's true religion, if you want to call it that, is very, very different from that. That the Lord wants his true teachers to teach the difference between the holy and the profane, the difference between the clean and the unclean. He wants us to make correct judgments based on his Torah. In the first five books of the Bible, there's about 600 specific instructions that Jesus referred to in Matthew 5, 17 to 19. That if we take the least of those 600 instructions and teach and break them and then teach others to break them, we are going to be called least in the kingdom of God. So if we go along with all this stuff without questioning, researching, pressing in on the Lord, listening to advice to at least take a look at it, uh, we not only stand the chance of losing all our reward in eternity except salvation, but we stand the chance of losing our salvation or never having salvation. So with that, I'm going to encourage everyone to make a point of repenting every day Go before the Lord and ask him, search my heart. I've been doing that for some time, and it's not too many days go by. I suddenly think of something in my past that was wrong. And I go, oh, that's, the Lord's just showing me something else to repent of. Just do that constantly. We're, the Lord says we're out of time, but his time is different from us. So these few moments that are left before the last great battle begins, use them wisely. If you haven't given your heart to the Lord, to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Jewish people call him Hashem, if you haven't done that, do it with all the sincerity that you can find in your heart. And the Lord looks at our heart and he will begin working with you supernaturally. Repent of your sins, and sin is the transgression of the Torah. That's 1 John 3, 4. And then you can enter the new covenant, which is found in Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. This is the new covenant I will make with my people, the two houses, Christianity and Judaism. I'll write my Torah on their minds, on their hearts. And I will be their God and they will be my people. So, 
That all being said, like Lisa often says, I'll see you the next video or in the air. That's uh, The Lord is My Shepherd, her sweet voice. So I'll sign out, kneel with Rock Our World.